If you spent any time at all driving a stock flat fender, you know very quickly they don't stop very well. So if you have nine inch drums and you want it to stop better, this is the video for you. Whether your Jeep is hopped up or completely stock, you can benefit from disc brakes. While there are different options out there, Kaiser Willys makes it super easy and has one-stop shopping. I mean, they've got it all right down to the nuts and bolts, bearings, seals, everything. I will put the part numbers for everything we use today in the description of this video. Let's get on with it. We're gonna lose these little old drums and throw in these bad boys. Which one would you rather have? Any good build starts with a good demo. So let's start tearing stuff apart. First step is to jack the vehicle up, make sure it's secure and remove the wheels. Once you have your wheel off, you're gonna remove your uh, locking hub or drive flange or whatever your axle has on it. Then you're gonna remove all the spindle nuts and washers holding the hub and drum on. I recommend using the appropriate socket, but sometimes a chisel is all you have. There should be uh, some washers with a little tab on it and two of these nuts. You can see this one, the previous owner had, he preferred the chisel method. Occasionally you'll see a washer folded over. Um, if you do, just drive it down flat. Once both of the nuts are removed and the washers are off, that's all that's holding the drum on. on the backing plate you're going to remove the small flex hose and the little s brake line uh, we won't be using those with the disc brakes after that it's ready to take the drum off have a rag handy this front bearing um, will be greasy and will try to fall out so you just kind of give it a wiggle and it should slide right off that will expose your spindle and your brake shoes there are six bolts holding the backing plate to the knuckle they are 14 millimeter or 916. After you remove all six of those bolts, your backing plate will pop right off. That's what it looks like. You won't need that anymore. The last thing you'll need to remove from the knuckle is the spindle. Um, depending on what kind of gasket or sealant they use on this, you might have to get behind it um, and tap on it. Right here, there's a little bit of a lip you can tap on. Uh, do not hit it with a steel hammer out here. You'll damage the bearing race or the threads. So you can tap on it back here or get a small screwdriver in behind it. Depending on what kind of lubricant the previous owner put in here in the knuckle, if they just put straight gear oil in it, you're gonna have oil coming out. Um, just uh, keep that in mind as you remove the spindle. Other than those six bolts and the gasket, there's nothing holding it to the knuckle. Keep pushing in on the axle so you don't lose the balls in the U-joint. Since we have the axle this far apart, now would be a great time uh, to put a locker in or do any other maintenance up here. Um, that would save you from having to disassemble it in the future. Um, I'll put my locker video in the description. This is also a great time if you wanna do knuckle seals or kingpin uh, bearings or service. Uh, my knuckles leak pretty bad, so we're going to put this Kaiser Willie knuckle seal kit in while we have it to this point, and then we'll get back to the disc brake swap. I'm back. I replaced these knuckle seals, checked my kingpin bearings, and just kind of went over everything since it's already apart. Um, you're going to clean up this surface uh, as good as you can. I wipe a little bit of silicone on here just to prevent any water from getting in basically. Once you have your knuckle cleaned up and prepped, this assembly goes in. So here's the correct order. Goes the spindle, caliper bracket, dust shield. Notice the ears on the caliper bracket face outward. Now that I have the caliper bracket, dust shield, and spindle installed, we can move forward with the hubs and bearings. Before that, um, I'm going to splash a little bit of paint on this because it has a nice zinc coating on it, which will prevent corrosion, but it's a little too shiny to fit in with the rest of my Jeep. So I'm going to take a minute and do that, and then we'll move on to the next step. You will have to do a small amount of grinding on the knuckle. That is done so that as the pads wear, the calipers are able to slide back. I would focus your efforts uh, nearest this bolt. Uh, that's that's just the uh, bolt for the seal, the wiper seal. It's not really a structural part of the knuckle. Um, I ground a little bit off there and 
probably about three eighths of an inch in a trough. It's a very small, uh, narrow space. You don't have to take out that whole web and put the caliper in. You can slide it back and forth and see where it contacts the housing. I also ground a very small amount off the back of the caliper just to limit how much I had to take off the housing. There's a little ridge cast into it. Just kind of smoothed that out a little bit. Next step is to prepare the hubs. So I threw some paint on these just to protect them. You don't want to get paint on the inside really if you can avoid it. Um, you're going to take the outer race for each bearing um, and you want to make sure that it's facing this way so that the cone of the bearing can go in from the front and from the rear as well. You can absolutely set these up in your press and press the bearings in, um, but I've always found it quick and easy just to take a brass rod and tap it equally. Once you get it started straight, you can just kind of jump back and forth. Um, it's only a press fit for a short distance, so it'll slide smoothly till you hit that ridge, then you press it uh, about the thickness of the race. So I start by just taking a little bit of oil Make sure everything's nice and clean. Wipe it on the outside of the race and drop it in. Um, use a block of wood or a piece of aluminum or something soft to set your hub on. And never use a hardened steel rod. This is a brass rod, so it's very soft. It won't damage that bearing. This is what it should look like when you're all done. So notice the taper is facing out so the bearing can be set in. Same thing on both sides. And both of these bearings are the same. It is important to look, um, get a light and look from the inside. There's little cutouts that will help you when you need to remove these bearings. Those are good spots to look uh, to ensure that the bearing race is seated all the way down. And you need to do that on both sides. So if you need to get a flashlight, um, and just ensure that that bearing race is all the way in. Next step is to install the rotor onto the hub. So if you notice there's a flat mach machined surface on the back, the raised portion of the rotor goes up and that will set right down on there. Um, the studs are gonna come up through the back side, and the knurled portion will grip into the hub. For this part, if you have a press, you can use it. Um, or just hammer them in. I have a press. I found this is just as fast. Um, go to a nice solid surface. I use sockets underneath, so I have five sockets under there to support it. Be careful you don't hit this with your hammer because that's where your seal press is in. So I'll use my little brass rod again and you just drive these studs till they're tight. It'll hold the uh, hub and the rotor together and then that part is done. Once you have all your studs um, pounded in, make sure that it's threads all the way down and that the splines aren't protruding up. Um, that's how you'll know that you have the correct stud in there. After that, it's just going to be pack these bearings with grease and then we can put our rear hub seal in. When it comes time to pack the bearing, just get some good wheel bearing grease and uh, use whatever method works for you. If you have a bearing packer, that's great. I'm cheap. And I just use the old palm method. So just keep gooping it in there all the way around and you'll start to see it coming out the top. So we're gonna do that all the way around to, uh, we'll just do one bearing for now and then uh, we'll put the seal in. Once you have your bearings greased, Ready to go. I wipe a little grease on the inner race and this is the rear bearing with the narrow cone part facing forward. And you just drop it in there. Once that is in, you take your seal. And one tip with seals is you always want the spring facing the oil or the grease. So it goes in this way. And the key to getting a seal seated properly is making sure it starts flat and square. So we're going to tap it in with a hammer and then I have this piece of aluminum. We'll hit it nice and flat or you could use a press and press it down in. And 
And that's it for the hub seal and the rear bearing. That seal will keep the bearing in there. So you can flip it over now. And this rotor is ready to install. For the next part, I like to take a little grease and wipe it on the uh, seal surface on the spindle, just to give the seal a nice lubed up spot to go over. Um, always feel that edge if there's any burr, if there are any burrs on it, take a file before you install your spindle and uh, smooth it out. So now you're just gonna take the hub and try not to bump the seal too much. It should plop right on. The next piece would be the front bearing. Slide that in. That will hold the rotor in place. Then the smooth washer, line up the little tang with the little groove in the spindle. Then your first nut. So always start them by hand and they should, you should be able to get them all the way in by hand. Snug it up, spin it every now and then, make sure it feels good. Now when I tighten up wheel bearings, I just do it by feel. So get it kind of snug, give it a spin. New bearings, uh, you will make a little bit tighter because they will wear in. Used bearings, you just snug them up until there's drag. That feels really good right there. I'm gonna go a tiny bit more. Feels good. Once you have the preload set to where you want it, the next piece is gonna be this washer. It may be mangled up because some people bend them over. Um, the little tang there faces in towards the axle, line it up with the groove. It will slide in tight. And then lastly, it's another nut. This will be your lock nut. Just like the other one, start it by hand. I take these apart with an impact, but I always put them back together by hand because you don't want to mess up your spindle threads. That would be a bad day. So this second nut, all it does is hold the first nut in place. So I go a lot tighter with this one because it doesn't affect the preload. It's just a lock. And if your nuts all chiseled up from the previous owner, the socket will want to skip. So that shouldn't affect your drag at all because that was just pushing up against the nut that was already tight. Now it's up to you. Some people will take a pry bar and bend that washer over. I do not, I just leave it at that. So this one is done. It's ready to have the uh, drive flange or hub put back on here and then uh, move on to the caliper and brake lines. Installing the caliper is pretty straightforward. You're gonna remove the caliper slide pins. Uh, the caliper comes preloaded with the pads. Just make sure they're in the right location and they're seated in all the way. The one on the piston side has a clip that holds it in. Then just slide it over the rotor. Since they're brand new calipers, you don't have to worry about depressing the piston. It should already be in all the way. It's going to drop down in between those grooves. And take your slide pins. The outer one goes through the brake pad, so make sure it's lined up. This is a 3 8 Allen. One thing to note is the calipers are marked with an R and an L. So this says R on the back, which is right hand side sitting from the driver's seat. But the main way to tell and the main important thing is that your bleeder is up top. The bleeder should be inboard and should be the highest point on the hydraulic portion of the caliper. Make sure everything spins. It's normal to hear that dragging noise because the pads are in contact. But you see how that slides? That's good, means we're not bound up on anything. All that's left to do is hook up the brake lines. Um, there's a few different ways you could do this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use this stock little tab where the short flex hose was, so that way we can retain our hard line where it was. I'm going to put this in here and the flex line up there. 
That will allow it to have plenty of room as the axle steers to uh, flex without hitting anything. There's really nothing over here. So if you run tire chains or something, you'll want to make sure that this stays back out of the way. You can bend this tab a little bit as well. There it is so. all put together. So the banjo bolt has a little copper washer, one on each side of the fitting. And then this uh, threads in with your factory uh, brake line. So now I'll go ahead and work the steering and you can watch how it moves. All that will be left on this side now is I take some brake clean and wipe this rotor down in case you got any grease on it. And then once we're all done, we'll bleed it and it's ready to go. Wasn't that easy? Now we just do the same steps on the driver's side, call it a day. So that concludes the Kaiser Willie front disc brake conversion for CJ 2A, 3A, 5, 3B, all of the above. Um, in conclusion, my thoughts are it's a very simple to install and very complete kit. Uh, it comes with everything you need and I think that's uh, the most desirable thing. For most of us, we want to buy one thing that has everything in it. So it has the hardware, it has the hoses, um, comes with the instructions and there's really very little modification um, to your vehicle. Um, just that little bit of grinding on the knuckles. This kit can be installed by anyone with uh, basic hand tools. I didn't use any uh, special equipment or tools with this job. Um, I have a press here, but I just used a hammer. Um, it, so it's really something that anyone that uh, has basic mechanical abilities uh, would be able to do. Um, and another great thing is you have Kaiser Willys customer um, support and tech support when you order parts from them. So um, go on their website. I'll put all the links to everything I used in this video in the description. Use uh, code REDEYEGARAGE10 to save 10%. That doesn't cover uh, tubs and tires and body parts, um, but all the little mechanical stuff, um, it'll save you some money. In the next video, we're gonna be installing this. This is a dual reservoir master cylinder, which complements the disc brake conversion uh, very nicely. This is another Kaiser Willys item, so I'm looking forward to uh, to trying this out. I've done disc swaps before, and I've always used the single uh, Reservoir Master, so this is a huge upgrade, and I'm gonna see um, how the install goes, and we'll do a performance test as well. I'll also test the, the disc brake performance and give you an update on that um, once this is in, and obviously the engine's running and it's back on the road. So thanks for watching. Um, check out Kaiser Willys for all the parts that you may need. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll gladly talk you through um, or give you my input on anything that I did in any of these videos. So thanks for watching and catch you later.